All right, Heather Yell. Um, I may look familiar in that uh, I'm also with Impact Story. Uh, and Heather um, talked about one of the main things we're doing, which is on paywall. But the way we work is we tend to have a lot of projects going at the same time. And I thought it'd be really cool if we could get the chance to share with you some of the other projects we're doing, mostly because, uh, well, partly because we're excited about them, but partly because um, this seems like a great uh, group for us to basically, you know, expose more surface area for collaboration. We love collaborating, and we feel like each of these projects is an area where either organizationally you can collaborate with somebody, or technically, even just by someone using the API uh, that we've built. So that's what we're trying to hope um, that each of these projects will represent for folks uh, listening. So a lot of the how we uh, work was based on the, the feeling that me and Heather had way back in the day at a hackathon at some point that said, hey, you know, if we want to change a culture to be more open, uh, we have to make sure that we change the reward system because you, know, you talk to a lot of scientists and they pretty much all say the same thing. They're like, oh, this is pretty great, but like, how's this going to affect my tenure case or whatever, right? So we said, hey, we should build tools that would try and help that happen. And what we found is that when we build these tools, we're trying to assess open science, we end up having to build some kind of an open database to do it, to find the products, to do the assessment on. And then often that open database becomes useful for other things. So a great example of that was on paywall that Heather talked to you guys about. It was supposed to be an assessment project, but it became useful for a lot of other things. And maybe some of the other stuff we're doing will become useful for those other things as well. And maybe some people in this room will give that good ideas for how we could do that. So I'm gonna to talk to about one or two projects that we're doing. Um, we're just gonna try and go through this list relatively quickly. I probably won't have time, of course, to get really deep into it, but. Again, maybe it's an opportunity for someone to say, hey, you guys, this, uh, we're already doing this, or we could use this in such and such a way or whatever. Um, so on paywall, Heather already talked about, so I'm not really gonna spend any time on that. Um, the Software Impact Project is something that's being funded by the Sloan Foundation. Uh, it's in collaboration with the University of Texas. And we are really excited about this because we feel like there's sort of a three level uh, or a, a, a triad of open science that we hear a lot of times, right? We've got open access so people can read the papers. We've got open data so people can you know, replicate um, and also like build on, on the data gathering. We've got finally open software, right? So people can do the things that the person did originally to create the paper in the first place. And open software has lagged a little bit behind uh, those other two and really starting to see a lot of action right now. So we're really excited to be working on this. So what we're essentially building is uh, a big database of every, um, every item of research software and how it's been cited, right? Like Garfield built this citation databases back in the 60s. We wanna build that same type of thing, but for research software. And to do that, we're gonna to need to scan through all the literature. Uh, we're gonna see every time a person has used software, which they often don't cite it in any structured way, so they'll just kind of offhand mention it. So we kind of have this whole machine learning thing to try and understand those, those mentions and figure out which ones are, are actually using software. Um, and we have a little tool that we've built already that you can use as .org, where you can enter uh, any project of any kind, whether it's software, data, code, um, uh, papers, whatever, uh, and then we'll tell you how to cite the project. And the way that we find out how to cite the project is, you know, when it's simple, it's simple, right? Just ask Crossref, no big issue. When it's code, when it's complicated, a lot of times we're going to the, um, you can see that little thing says citation provenance down there. So we're going to the website um, of the software, we're going to GitHub, we're checking, um, uh, DOIs that have been registered at Zenodo for the software. This is a, it's really complicated, but the point is we find all these places to try and figure out how they want to cite their software. So that's the software thing. Paper Buzz. Uh, we already heard a little bit about Paper Buzz. Paper Buzz is built on the Crossref event data platform, which is awesome. They've got a terrific API that finds alt metrics. Who here has heard alt metrics? Anybody know that? Alt metrics? Yay, that's great. I'm really happy about that because I coined that word in a tweet like seven years ago, and now people know about it, which is awesome, which I'm really excited about. So it's a thing that people like. They are interested in it. Um, there's a couple good sources that are commercial source sources. Crossref has said, hey, let's, let's do this in an open way so that people can get this uh, data and build on it. And we said, that's great. Um, we work with PKP, who's funding the project, um, and Juan, who you already heard of from a little bit, um, to work to build something that's built on Crossref event data, but can provide kind of a UI for it, right? So it's just an API, which is great, but sometimes people aren't so comfortable with APIs, they wanna be able to see something. So this is a pretty darn basic UI. It's still, in, it's still kind of in construction, we're still working on it. Um, but the idea would be this is a web page that someone can go to that they could find out the alt metrics for any particular research project. Um, and this also has its own API that adds a little bit on top of what, the, what you might get from cross reference data. So impact story profiles, this is something we built a long time ago, long, long, long time ago. Um, it's probably five years old or more. Uh, we built it, like uh, as I was mentioning, at a hackathon, it was one of the first projects that I, uh, that I did as a grad student, one of the uh, first things I worked with Heather on. Um, and the idea is that if you're really into open science and you've done a lot of open science and you've done all these things that we want you to do, you shared your code, you shared your data, you're interested in all metric, you're trying to make a global impact, how do you show that off, right? You can make, you know, there's various profiles that you can make, whatever, but they're more focused on kind of traditional outputs. So we wanted to try and create something that's focused on open science outputs and shows open science impact. So for instance, are people talking about your work? Are people citing your data? Are people reusing your software? 
Those are the type of questions that we want to be able to uh, answer. And so you can make one at open, uh, profile.impactstory.org. This is just a quick screenshot. Um, open science assessment project. So one thing we found in the course of profiles, and as Heather was saying, just for you know, making things nice and clear, is the profiles did not really go over real well. Like we created them, people liked them. There's some tons of people who love them, but tons is like thousands. It's not hundreds of thousands or millions, right? And so we found there was kind of a ceiling on how many people really want to use those profiles. We're still, we still have them up there. We're still trying to publicize them. But um, what we found is that people who aren't already doing open science don't really want to make one because the news isn't real good for them, right? So they're not real excited about it. But the evaluators who are really keen on open science, they really want to find out the open science behaviors of people in their department or in their institution. And we uh, ended up collaborating with someone um, at the uh, National Institute of Mental Health who is really excited about trying to measure open science at NIMH. And he said, well, could we just get a list of all of our researchers. They don't have to make their own profile. Profile. I want you to make one for everybody and find out their open science behaviors. So we did, and we're gonna try and extend this to a lot of other institutions as well. But for right now, it's just, uh, it's just with NIM. So um, it has the super catchy name, Open Science Assessment Project. For now, we maybe we'll try and come up with a real name later on. Um, but so this, you can see all the investigators at NIM, and then you can kind of click on them. So you can see these, again, these sort of triad, right? Like what are your, uh, how much is open access papers, how much is open data, and how much is it is open code. And we can get that by scanning the papers and by kind of reading them and, and finding out within there if the person has shared their code. We can start using some of these same machine learning techniques for using for the early projects. And then you can zoom in on someone, this is Adam Thomas, and you can kind of get this little thing of like, oh, like, yay, happy, I, I shared it, boo, I didn't, or maybe it's embargoed or whatever, and it'll, it'll become shared later on. And you can, the, the people can edit and stuff like that. So the idea is we can create this tool that people who want to assess open science, who want to say, yes, more open science, they can use this to help create that, that um, demand from above, right? To say, why aren't you doing open science? Yes, you should do it. Yes, it can go in your tenure. Yes, we can like, make decisions based on it. Um, and then finally, I want to talk about um, two more uh, that aren't really so much about assessment. Um, one is called Get the Research. We got a really awesome grant from the uh, Arcadia Fund. Uh, it's $850,000. It's gonna give us the space to really kind of like, you know, dig into this project that we're super excited about. Um, and it's a way for regular people to find, read, and understand research, right? It's great that things are open, but if I can't find that open source or open access paper, well, it doesn't really help me very much. And then if I can find it, but I can't understand it because it's written in a bunch of jargon or a bunch of, you know, very field specific types of things, what good does it do me as a regular person? So what we're going to do is we're going to create a search engine on the unpayable corpus. We've got 20 million free to read open access articles there. And we're going to build this thing called an explanation engine that uses machine learning to read the paper and then try and explain it to a regular person, someone who maybe is motivated, you know, they, they're not, they're not um, you know, we're not gonna make every single scientific paper easily understandable by every single person, right? That's not gonna happen. But a person who is motivated, who doesn't necessarily have the education resources to be deep into the field, they could get, for instance, annotation, right? So one of the things we're gonna do is, when there's hard terms, we'll annotate it on the side. Um, we can do that automatically. Or we can create uh, lay summaries. I'm talking too long. And so uh, that's a screenshot. You can check it out, get the research.org. We can talk more about it later on. Um, and finally, we're uh, interested in trying to create a graph of disambiguated authors. So ORCID is gonna solve this problem in due time. Every single person is gonna have an ORCID and every single ORCID will be linked to every single product. That's awesome, that's exactly what needs to happen. In the meantime, that doesn't exist. And so we're gonna try and build one. Again, trying to use kind of a machine learning approaches to cluster the authors so that we have uh, a database of every person and what they've written that other people could use for cool projects. Uh, it is currently available at vapor.com. It's not actually, it's not actually available. Uh, it's going to happen eventually. All right, and thanks to everyone who's funded us, and thanks for your patience. Sorry, I went a little long. Thank you.